We've never flown a better Warbird than the FMS Tiger Cat 1700mm. This thing is phenomenal and our favorite Warbird by far. Come chat with us in Discord about it. The server invite is in the description. Check it out, YouTube. FMS sent us the F7F Tiger Cat 1.7 meter, and this thing is freaking massive, and it's also really heavy, so I'm gonna put it down here in a moment. It's got dual motors with sweet scale propellers, gaffless hinges across the model. I mean, this thing is just absolutely phenomenal. We're gonna be flying it with a 52, I believe. Yeah, 5200 LiPo from SMC. They're back in the LiPo business, at least for this pack. This is supposed to be a little bit more affordable. And if you wanna get back into LiPos and you want, maybe you don't wanna deal with high voltage packs, this one is a great choice from SMC. Pick it up from smcracing.com. Danny sent one of them to us to test and evaluate, and that's what we're gonna do with this model. Figure, why not put it into a big power hungry beast like this? So let's get her on the taxiway and take her on up. All right, let's go ahead and get the plane moved around on the taxiway. You can see it's got great round handling. No problems at all. We're flying at 150% rates as is usual. I will pull up the screen, tell you what my expo and whatnot is real fast. I get a lot of people who ask about that. What I want you to do is consider experimenting for yourself and find what works for you. What works for me may not work for you. Currently flying this with 100%, 150% rates, 40% aileron expo, 40% elevator and 65% rudder. All right, we're going in half flaps. Turning her up so we can hear her. 25.36 There we go. Punching it out. Respectable roll rate. I'm not expecting it to be super crazy like a Timber X with full span ailerons or anything. It is beautiful in the sky. If you like Warbirds, this plane is for you. This time we remembered to put the fuel tank on the belly. Look at that presence. It has an AS3X gyro in it. It's running an AR637T. I am not using very much in the way of gain. I believe it's like uh, 2X gain, like 20 roll, 35 to 40 pitch, and like 10 yaw. So most of it's just me flying the plane. I'm hands off and it's just there to help with uh, turbulence and whatnot, which we get a lot of here at this airport. Let's make it fly like a fighter plane, so go full throttle a little bit, kind of go bank to bank. Very agile plane. I'm barely pulling the stick to get it to do this either. Full roll. Looks great. Very easy to control. Uh, actually, almost feel like 40% expo at 150% rates might be too much. Let's drop the flaps, give you guys a look at how slow it can go. Or at least how slow it, it you know, tends to slow down as it's flying by. Look at that thing go. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Kind of envy my grandfather. He's not around anymore, but like he must have seen these things fly in the Korean War when he was still in the service. That would have been so cool to see. But hey, I'll settle for the next best thing, which is this P-50, or sorry, this F-7F from FMS. Full flaps are in. Don't have a whole lot of uh, downward flap or elevator compensation, kind of floats in on its own. Wheelies, no problem, takes off, no problem. Make sure you keep the power up. It is a Warbird, it is very heavy. So you do not want to stall it. If you stall it, it you're gonna be in for a bad time. Let's show you what a stall looks like in this thing. So we're gonna go up, nice and high, back flip over itself. Okay. It actually handled that really well. Uh, we're gonna get up really high because I don't know how this is gonna handle being as heavy as it is. We're gonna pull the elevator back and just hold the stick, three, two, one, pulling it. It'll probably roll to the right or the left. Actually, it's not. I can control it with the rudder. Look at that go. It's got a really gentle stall, so I was totally wrong. I'm just holding stick back right now and it's just floating to the earth. Letting go, throttling up. It must be those massive wings. So if you want to fly a Warbird, I will admit gladly I was wrong. The stall characteristics on this thing are really nice. Uh, it's not often that you get a Warbird that lets you stall it without biting you. When I say biting, generally mean that it rolls severely, kind of like the Viper 70. A lot of the, Vi uh, the Warbirds will do that. Let's see if it'll do knife edge. So you guys who like to do that kind of stuff with your plane, roll it over, bring it back. God, it looks so cool. Throttle up, tree height. 
Well, I botched that one. I started wondering if I was going to hit my wife or not. She's been helping film a lot on the channel. I actually have to send my transmitter in, so I'm trying to get as much content filmed as I can before I send the transmitter in for repair. Yeah, it's got really bad yaw coupling, so you don't want to try to do a knife edge too much with it, unless you go really fast. I bet it would do it well then. Full throttle. There it goes. It's kind of kind of iffy. Flip it around. Throttle back. Look at that thing go. So beautiful. Dropping the gear. There goes the gear doors. You can see it starting to deploy. Let's see if we can land from the other direction. Drop full flaps. Keep the nose kicked around with the rudder a little bit. There we go. Keep those turns coordinated. Get lined up with the taxiway. There we go. Very good. Look at that thing go. Wheelie the whole way. Beautiful. FMS, you guys really know how to design some heavy airplanes that don't fly like they're super heavy, even though they very much obviously are. This is probably one of the heaviest props I've ever flown. One of the guys on our Discord server likes to think everything that has uh, a motor in it is not as powerful as it should be. So he's actually, whoops, he's actually taken it and added extra thrust to his. It's kind of a running joke on our Discord server. If you're not part of that yet, you totally should be. Join us on Discord for sure. And if those of you guys who are, um, you know, those of you who are newer to our community, we just launched a Spreadshirt shop. You can look at it on our YouTube channel. It's probably even on the right side of the screen as you're watching this vid. You can go ahead and pick up some stickers for yourself. One of the things that we will do, if you crash a plane that you stuck some stickers on, from our channel, we will absolutely feature the crash as long as you got some footage of it. So if you can send it to us, we will put it on one of the vids. Or if there's enough vids, we'll actually make a community crash compilation. If you guys have some stuff you want to get rid of, throw a Two Brothers sticker on it. And we will gladly put you on the channel and make you famous. Look at how good that thing lands. Good gosh, how much power do we have? All right, so we need to start planning to land pretty soon, but I'm going to throttle up a little bit more and have fun with it. Just very, very fun to fly, very dialed in. My only complaint with this plane so far is that it just is very big. It took a lot of Jenga playing and Tetris playing to get it to fit inside of my friggin' vehicle, along with the A10 from FMS that we're reviewing today as well for the first time in a while. Um, I'm gonna drop the gear, probably bring it in for its final landing. You don't wanna get this plane if you don't have the space for it. It is very big even when it's fully disassembled. So keep that in mind if you plan to, to pick up an F7F Tiger Cat. It ain't small. If it was a 1.4 meter model, it'd be a little bit easier to transport, but because it's a big monster 1.7 meter, it takes up a ton of space. All right, let's keep that nose coordinated turned in, get her on approach, keeping a little bit of throttle, but mostly getting our airspeed by letting the nose drop. Keeping the plane leveled out. There we go, starting to flare right about now. Wheeling, there we go. Look at how easy that is to fly. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We'll take it up again one more time after this, and we're going to fly it on an SMC 4400 high voltage pack to see if that'll help it handle even better. Because I get the feeling this thing might do some sweet Harriers and high alphas. All right, so my wife actually got a little daring and suggested that we fly this right over her head. I'm not sure why she's asking me to do that, but she thought it would look really cool. So she's over there oh, kneeling down in the center of the taxiway. Gonna drop the flaps, get her lined up for takeoff. Very good ground handling on this bugger. All right, I'm gonna stand over here because I wanna be sure that I'm not gonna put her in any danger. I will crash this plane into the ground before it gets too close to her. Here we go, three, two, one. There we go. <laughs> this is on an SMC 4400 pack. That could have been more dramatic, but I didn't want to risk her. So, you know, aviation safety is paramount, even if we all want to do some goofy stuff. Anyway, as I said, 4400 SMC pack. This is significantly lighter feeling than it was on the 50, what, 200 LiPo that we just flew it on. It feels much more aggressive. One minute. What I want to do is take it up and stall it, see if we can harrier it. which apparently you can. I kind of want to get that lower to the ground. That was a quick Harrier test. 
I know it's not all that great looking because there's no clouds today. It's been the curse. Every time I bring my wife out, there's absolutely no clouds in the sky. We're gonna try a quick high alpha approach. Bring it in, show you guys that, you know, these warbirds do actually have some really well thought out aerodynamics. And this is not underpowered. For anything to be able to do a high alpha approach like that, it's pretty good. I'm barely holding the stick back. There we go. So you can do a high alpha with it. Look at it go, like a harrier almost. It's got so much power you can throttle right out of it too. I don't know why you need more. It's not really a plane that you're gonna be able to do like, um, you know, crazy aerobatics with. It's more like a, it is very much a scale flyer, but you can do goofy stuff with it because it is a big hunk of foam shaped like a tiger cat. It is not a true tiger cat, but it does have a lot of the characteristics of a tiger cat because it does have the same wing type, the same plan form, everything else. So it's very similar. Uh, I'm sure if you put a tiger cat pilot on here, they would probably tell you it doesn't feel much different, except it's just not as heavy. But that ability to hold high alpha on the approach makes it actually much easier to land this plane than other planes that I've flown. Um, it's not often that I can hold a plane back like that and just wheelie it for a quick touch and go. Let's check the voltage. Okay, so no data on the voltage. I guess the voltage lead got knocked loose, so we'll just deal with that. We'll plan to bring it in at about five or six minutes of flight time. I'm gonna drop the gear again. I'm gonna do another touch and go with it because I love landing planes. I think that's what we do best here at Two Brothers and getting them to look really good. It's taken a lot of practice and patience, but it's totally worth it. Look at that wheelie. It's so effortless on this center of gravity. And the CG's not even that far back. It's just partially what's helping with it is getting the, um, the weight out of the plane by not flying as heavy of a pack. The 5200 flew fine, but it actually seems to fly much better with the, uh, the weight reduction. When there's less weight to push around, the plane generally does fly better, and it can actually fly a little bit slower at its critical angle of attack, which I don't even think we've approached yet with this model. Super cool. Bring the gear back up. Oh my gosh, just do a full speed pass. That's not even full speed, but it's close enough. Look at how dialed in this thing is. I mean, the AS3X is doing some help with it too, but you know, most of it's just how good the plane is. I love these warbirds, man. I wasn't sure if they would be my thing, but after flying a few of them that FMS has sent to us, like I'm getting a real appreciation for them. drop the gear as we go by. I've got a bee flying around my head. I think he's not happy about me being here for some reason, so I'm gonna just move a little bit further closer, rather a little closer to my wife so I get away from the bee. I don't wanna get stung while I'm trying to fly. Although I do have safe in this plane uh, with my AR-637, so if I was to get stung, I could put it in safe and at least get the plane down safe while I'm howling in pain. Those of you guys who hate safe for whatever reason, you're not gonna like the upcoming uh, gyro vid that we're making. I've been writing a script for it. I'm gonna be, uh, it's gonna be probably 10 to 20 minutes of me just kind of dismantling all of the anti-gyro arguments. But it really just comes down to fly how you wanna fly and stop telling other people how to fly that they're not real pilots just because you personally wouldn't use a gyro. Don't be that guy that makes people not want to be into model aviation. There's enough gatekeeping with everything else in life. Just enjoy that people want to fly planes. That's really all there is to it. Share the camaraderie of flying with other people and this unique and rare gift that we have to be able to share this with the world and have so much fun with it. All right, what are we at right now? Five minutes and 17 seconds. We'll call that the, the end flight for this model. I'll give you guys my viewpoint on it. I, so far, friggin' love it. This is very, very beautiful. Handles like a dream. Um, I've handled other tricycle gear planes that don't handle anywhere near as nice as this one does. 
Um, it kind of reminds me of the E-Flight Sirius, except the Sirius has a little bit more power, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and taxi it over to my wife. I'll give you guys the, the Two Brothers score on it right now. I'm gonna tell you as far as Warbirds go, my opinion on this is that this plane is a solid 10 out of 10, which I don't think we've had a, in the channel history. I don't think it's ever been a 10 out of 10 plane. From the scale gear to the scale props to the paint job and the finish, if I had to be fair, if I had to like separate things into two different categories, I'd say it's missing the decal for the nose, the, the pinup nose art, because she disintegrated, because she would not adhere to the paint. That's not really a fault of the plane. That's more of a fault of the type of decals that FMS uses. So in all fairness, FMS, please start using better you know, decals for that kind of thing. But in terms of overall detailing, I mean, there's rivets all over this plane. This thing is covered in warts from the, all these molded in rivets. The, the finish is phenomenal. The fact that there's, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, gapless hinges on every single surface. This thing is premium priced and it is premium finished. It handles like a dream. This is probably one of the best flying warbirds that I've ever flown. And I've flown quite a few of them by this point. I think you guys are going to be super happy with this one. Link is in the description if you'd like to buy one. Remember to use the codes in the description to get yourself some cash off of it. Uh, it helps support us at the channel and what we like to do and all this crazy stuff. Um, really appreciate you guys for checking us out. And we'll see you in the B-roll section coming up right after this for some more flight characteristics. The Tiger Cat is a luxury experience of flying a classic warbird with so many beautiful details and the ability to cut through turbulence and wind almost like a full-scale aircraft. We can't sing its praises highly enough. Everything about it is nearly perfect. This is a channel first. We can almost always find some negatives to a model that would make us drop the review score, but the Tiger Cat stands above all other models with a perfect 10 out of 10. There is no finer foam warbird that we've had the joy of flying yet. It's rock solid stable in the sky, firmly planted no matter what maneuver you're performing. It stalls gently, yet is almost as agile as our planes that we set up for maximum agility. There isn't much to cover here or watch out for. It's really so good that you'd be doing yourself a huge disservice if you don't pick one up. Use the codes REFERRAL2BROSRC for 10% off your order, and 2BROSRC for $15 off your order of $100 or more. FMS partnered with us so that we could help you guys save some money on these elegant machines. We hope you enjoyed this review, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on Discord and in the comments section. Drop us a note and say hi. See you next time.